This video is to show how to adjust columns near slab transitions in order to have Adapt Builder properly check punching shear um, with respect to multiple slab thicknesses near a column. This is applicable to all versions of Adapt Builder, and this model was made, and this video will be performed using Builder 2015.3. In this example, we have an 8-inch slab with 24-inch uh, square columns. We also have a balcony slab that's 4 inches. And if we take a section cut through here, we can see that the slab is um, not offset from the top. The soffit has a notch in the, in the slab transition zone. Also note that the columns are placed at the interface between the main 8-inch slab and the 4-inch balcony slab. So we're going to go ahead and run the model. We'll first mesh the model. And we're going to run this for strength dead and live. We're only evaluating the, uh, the gravity condition for this example. So we'll select OK to run. And after running the model, we're going to check the punching shear. So we'll go to FEM, punching shear check. And using the support line results toolbar, I'm going to turn on the graphical outcome of the punching shear check. So we can see that there's clearly um, a big discrepancy between, let's say, an interior column where we have an 8-inch slab and an interior column. Now, Part of this is just due to the moment, uh, the unbalanced moment in the end span here versus this interior condition. But that's not the overwhelming factor that's influencing this large um, stress ratio. So if we go and dig deeper into this, I'll, I'm going to go to reports, single default reports, tabular, punching shear design, and I'll report the punching shear parameters for column 19 and for moments about the local um, R axis, or I'm sorry, the S axis, we can see that for R and S, we have an effective depth equal to 2.38. So because the column is on the interface of the two slabs, it, it selects the, the effective depth related to the thinner slab um, as a conservative measure. And this can lead to these, these results. Now, if we take this column, and we move it slightly to the um, to the right. I'll use modify, copy, and move. And I'm going to move this column over three inches. So we'll say 0.25. Now we're locating the column just inside the eight-inch slab. We still have a balcony slab, and this column is still going to be considered as an interior condition. But now we're going to go back to FEM. Because I've moved a column, I'm going to remesh the slab. We will reanalyze for the strength dead plus live load combination. And we'll again check the punching shear. When we do this, we're going to see that the value will drop drastically. So it was at 6.99, now it's 2.64. As we continue to move it towards the 8-inch uh, slab, the effective depth is going to grow closer and closer towards that of the 8-inch slab, which is the 6.88. I'll go back to reports. And again, from single default tabular reports, we're going to check the punching shear parameter. And we're going to look at the effective depth that's being used for this condition once we've moved the column. So now we can see the effective depth is 4.63. So the program will use a weighted average of the effective depths if we move the column to either side of the interface. Even if I move it to the uh, left side, so we'll go back and do that. We're going to select the column again. I'll go back to Modify, Copy, Move. And we're going to locate this negative. 0.5 feet. So now we're just inside of the 4-inch slab. And again, we're going to remesh, reanalyze,
and then recheck the punching shear. And in so doing, our effective depth now is shown as 6.61. So in this case, because the slab is inside of this particular zone, the balcony, we'll go to reports, single default, tabular, punching shear, Again, looking at column number 19, the program, because it's located in that thinner slab, it's using, again, by default, the thinner slab effective depth. As long as the column encroaches into the thicker slab, the program will use a weighted average. We'll make one last pass at this column, and I'm going to now move it um, over We're going to move this 1.25. So now we're one inch, or I should say one foot from the, the edge of this eight inch slab. We will remesh again, reanalyze. And then uh, regenerate our punching shear check. And we can see this drops even further. So now we're at 1.95. If I review the results for the punching shear parameters, this is going to grow up into the 5.38 to 5.66 range in terms of the effective depth. and we can see it's 5.38 here. As we move that further and further away from the four inch slab, that becomes less effective and we grow our um, effective depth that's being used.